Today, I feel extremely delighted, overjoyed, even overwhelmed. This is not simply because of the milestone that has been established, but because I have been able to break old tradition, that is, being the first nursing student in the history of this institution to be the valedictorian. And for this, I am indeed honored. As I stand here before you, the joy I exude is unmatched. Perhaps I should think that the only other St. Lucian who has experienced such level of euphoria is the captain of the West Indies cricket team, Darren Sami. To the class of 2010, congratulations, well done. This is our moment, like Darren, to shine. Let this moment be for us rewarding, memorable, and exciting as we prepare to embark on our various fields of endeavor. For the successful completion of our course of studies, we the graduates benefited immensely from the guidance, support, and encouragement of a number of individuals. Their generous contributions impacted profoundly on who we are today and our individual achievements. We acknowledge sincerely the efforts of all our lecturers, as well as all the members and staff of the supporting departments. Those departments include the library, administration department, the information technology department, security, maintenance, and the ancillary staff. Your effort made our stay at the college enjoyable, memorable, and we are truly grateful. We extend sincere thanks to our family and friends for their financial, emotional, and psychological support and encouragement. We are indeed thankful to the government of St. Lucia and the Board of Governors of the college for greatly subsidizing our fees and guiding our college. Most importantly, we thank the Almighty God for life, health, wisdom, and endurance to persevere as we continue to strive for excellence. Prior to my entry into college, just like all of you here today, I listened attentively to the number of individuals and the experiences of what college is supposed to be. I tried desperately to imagine what it would be like for me based on those shared experiences. As I walked through the compound, familiarizing myself with the various departments, classrooms, and location of student services, oh, what a joy it was to see students from other departments as they eagerly anticipated the commencement of their various courses. The hugs, the kisses, the greetings expressed by many gave you a feeling of welcome and delight. An atmosphere of warm companionship pervaded the campus, and the feeling of cool confidence, the readiness to conquer all odds, seemed rooted. The semesters had gone fast, and life became a race against time. The assignments were coming in rapidly, stacking up at times, having us to wonder, how will we maintain our sanity? with long assignments, long lectures, yet limited resources. The broad smiles from colleagues and friends were now fading into mere greens. The hugs were no more, and the handshake a distant wave. One thing was certain, the pressure was mounting. No one walked, but instead scampered. Lunch was equated to a guzzle as our lunch hour was overbooked with reading assignments and completing assignments to be handed in the next class. 
just as you complete the task of the day, guess what? Your arrival home signaled the commencement of a new school day. With so much to do and so little time, it was tedious, it was tasking, it was challenging, but we survived. Being able to complete our course of study is a true measure of our mental growth and maturity and has enabled us to see who really we are and what we can truly accomplish. It is a foundation on which we can make our dreams come true and serve our country. But through it all, we have been able to make great friends and build a supportive community on which we could rely. Our stay at the college was not only about the academics. The school created avenues where students were able to de-stress. The most notable of these events being the college annual marathon in which both students and staff participated. Another prominent feature was the annual health fair organized by the Department of Health Sciences with student nurses caring for and treating members of the co college community, which of course was always our first set of clients. The inter-school and college Christian fellowship sessions held on Wednesdays and Fridays also enriched our college life. It would be remiss of me if I did not mention the Ripoff Center. Sorry, sorry, my apologies, my apologies. The Ripographic Center, where we will constantly rip off our bus fares. No wonder so many of us had to hike our way home day after day. Also, we will not forget the skillfully minded individuals at the canteen who assisted with our financial downfall with their pricey menu and snack list. Without you, our stay here would have been uninteresting. We the graduates are confident that we are equipped with the ability to better comprehend and cope with the real world as we pursue further education independently. The skills we have attained will enable us to function adequately in our various fields of specialty. As we celebrate our achievements, allow me to share with you the following principles of a successful life as provided by Mark Albion in his book titled, Making a Life, Making a Living. Make happiness a habit. Take your place at the table of life. Establish your purpose in life. Bring your values to work. Build a domain of love with the people you work with. Develop market values. Live a life, not a resume. Don't let success stand in the way of opportunity. Honor the past, celebrate the present, and embrace the future. Planning our dream is a key component of having a successful future. Allow me to share with you how you can make the perfect plan. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts, thy thoughts shall be established. In this passage, commit means to reveal. Reveal your thoughts, intentions, or endeavors. When an individual reveals his or her plans, and endeavors to God, he gives guidance and direction that results in success. <laughs> Establish. God establishes our plan by his divine guidance, which results in a successful outcome, which is consistent with his plan for our life. 
in essence, the verse teaches that when we seek God's guidance through prayer, our plans and efforts are established, or he grants success and rewards our effort in a manner that brings fulfillment in our lives. Sticking to our plan may not always be easy. You will encounter difficulties and setbacks, but be willing to make the necessary sacrifices in order to make the plan work. Remember, be consistent. Consistency is the fundamental ingredient in achieving goals. In conclusion, as we go out into the world of work, and some of us embark on new studies, we will encounter indifferences, even the difficult and the unreasonable, even some Thomas. I urge you to remain focused, be guided by your God, maintain true values, but build your life on solid principles, and when the rain and winds come, they will not overpower you. I encourage you to be part of the great events and success stories taking place around you. Utilize the skills and abilities that you have been blessed with for your advancement, the joy of the college, and for the development of your community. And in the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, and I quote, do not follow where the path may lead, Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Congratulations and all the best. <laughs>